G'day and welcome to Aussie Vision. It's Kyriakos here today and we're talking to one of the busiest Australian artists right now. Back in May, he finished second place at Eurovision in the semi-final in Turin and is Australia's Eurovision 2022 grand finalist. It's Sheldon Riley. Thank you so much for talking to us again. Thank you for having me again. <laughs> now, first of all, we have to say congratulations. It's a great result at Eurovision for yourself and for Australia. We are immensely proud of you and what you have achieved. Uh, it's now been five months since the contest, but what did you think of the whole Eurovision experience now? Was it what you expected? Uh, thank you. It was um, it was amazing. It was honestly the best experience of my entire life. Very difficult, a lot harder than what anyone could have ever prepared me for, but uh I'm I'm so grateful for it. It was, yeah, just something I'll never forget. Uh, what was one of the uh, highlights that you can share with us that you think you will cherish forever uh, from the whole experience? Highlights. I think my favorite part was the turquoise carpet. That was the moment because everyone had been going on about how Eurovision is the Hunger Games of music and just music TV and. I didn't really feel that until the turquoise carpet. That's the longest carpet I've ever walked on in my life. And uh, I was a bit nervous about it, actually, because I don't, I guess politically there's a lot of countries that have no real interest in Tur uh, talking to certain countries. And, I mean, going in, I was warned as well that, you know, not everyone likes the concept that Australia is in the, in the contest. So they haven't had the best of luck with that because there's, you know, every country sets up a kind of marquee and they chat to the uh, the entrance going down and um I spoke to every single country and I just remember SBS being so proud about it because we've worked so hard to be I, I know it sounds silly to say to work hard to be likable but we we worked really hard just to make sure that we had a great reputation going in and I mean as well I went in uh, just before uh, Ukraine uh, went so I was freaking that we wouldn't have much chatting opportunity but we spoke to everyone and that was it was amazing and it felt like the um the moment where everyone finally came together because everyone's so in this crazy headspace because it's so full on. And it's just the first moment where everyone just goes, ah, oh, okay, we can we can relax before we go in. I saw you had quite a few different interactions with various artists as well. <laughs> I do remember that. Uh, yes, yeah. I mean, I, I yes, there yeah. were, there were lots of, uh, funny individuals and uh, lots of really great people, but um. Yeah, there's, there's some moments. <laughs> now, your staging at Eurovision, uh, it's spectacular. It was uh, as anthemic as your song was. Uh, it was big and grand. And you had to sing while walking upstairs in your very heavy outfit. And you also worked with uh, Sasha Jean-Baptiste as well. Uh, what was the creative experience like for you, like with the staging and working with people behind the scenes? What what was that like for you? I mean, it was it was full on there was a lot of cooks in the kitchen a lot of people that wanted to give ideas and that's already hard enough when my you know my creative vision is already very strong on what I want but I mean I've, I've loved uh, Sasha for a very long time and there were a lot of differing opinions with her because she I mean she takes on some very big clients year after year and I think that the issue there is that no one can ever put all their time into one artist when they're taking on a few but um I I just said, let's just roll with it. She was the best in the business. I saw, you know, Switzerland last year with uh, Jean Tears and what they did just on the money, spot on. And I honestly, I couldn't have done that whole experience. I, I genuinely could not have done that experience without her. Um, Italy were not the most prepared and it, it was great to have, you know, Sasha go in there and just yeah. kill it. It was the most inspired I've ever been by anyone in in the working world ever. She was just so on it. But I, if I'm honest, I, I I don't regret anything, but I I definitely would have made some massive changes if I if I had, you know, my time back again. I mean, an all up 50 kilo outfit and a three story staircase and you know what I mean? The, the, yeah. the shoes, the mask, the every it's it was a lot. I think I was trying to prove something to myself, but um I'm still very proud of it all. I still can't believe I did it. <laughs> no, we're so proud as well. There's so many components that had to come together and it really did uh, come together in your performance. Yeah, well done again. Like We're so, uh, so proud of you. 
Now, considering your uh, extensive competitive uh, TV experience, uh, we'd love to know because you've you've seen quite a few. You've been sorry, you've competed in quite a few different TV shows. But how does Eurovision compare, like production and competitive wise, uh, in general for you, for you? Nothing compares to Eurovision. Nothing. And you know, there's so many people that are like, "Oh, you've got an upper hand because you've done this so many times." I'm like, nothing has ever come close to Eurovision. That was the most full-on experience of my entire life, but in in all aspects, you know, like you think about shows like The Voice, you go on The Voice, The Voice happens, and then The Voice is over, and then it's never again. Eurovision is forever. People remember these moments forever. It's like a, it's a legacy thing. There's there's so much there's so much that goes into Eurovision. It's it's scary. I've never ever felt scared being on a on a TV show before Eurovision was the first time I'm like, I don't know if I'm scared or nervous or excited, probably a bit of everything, but um, yeah, nothing compares. Absolutely nothing. It's, it's uh, also, I think the big comparison that people thought I would, I would do well in is that on the voice, we rehearse over and over and over. Same as America's got tongue, all those shows you rehearse over and over, but no one sees it in Eurovision. I don't even know why they call it a rehearsal. They should just call it a, you know, another show because there's a whole room of people. It all gets aired out live. Everyone sees it. You know, rehearsal is supposed to be the moment where you're supposed to mess up. And we, I wasn't allowed that at all. So um, none of us were. So it was, it was a tough one. But, yeah, I, I've learned so much from it. Now, when you landed in Turin, we managed to track down your delegation hosts, uh, Marty, Michelle, and Momo. Um, they told us amazing things about their experiences with you and the delegation. We got to know them a little bit. Like We interviewed each of them. And yeah. from their socials, we got to see a little bit of some of the behind-the-scenes stuff. But what was it like having those uh, volunteers in Turin? I, I was slightly jealous of them. They got to have the original experience that I would have always loved to have had, um, like getting to meet every artist. I didn't have all that much time. Everyone was like, did you really soak in the experience? I didn't get to do anything. There was so much, well, I did, but do you know what I mean? There was yeah. so much going on. They were living it up there. You could just see how big of fans they were of the contest of, of you know, of us and of all the other countries. They they were incredible. We got in a lot of trouble actually with them because there's um there was very strict rules on who was allowed to go where. Oh, okay. But my heart weighed so much that they were the ones that ended up carrying it pretty oh, much right. until the stage point. But um, there's no place on earth that has stricter rules than Eurovision. <laughs> but we managed to sneak them past. So they got full behind the scenes access with that with that with that dress that I was wearing. <laughs> oh wow! They got amazing experience from the sound of it. That's yeah, awesome. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> They lived it up. They had the greatest world. They, they were amazing. They showed us all around Italy. It was great just to have, um, you know, more people, especially around us that could, you know, speak the language and show us around when we did have some time. Now, we, we've we every time we've interviewed you, you've mentioned someone uh, that's been a big inspiration to you, and it's a Conchita Verst. Uh, you've mentioned her every single time. And uh, we saw that you had a heartwarming exchange with her. Um, now, I know that you had a, a a moment with her, but what was running through your mind uh, during that engagement? I was a lot. I explain that as the best and worst experience of my life, to be honest with you. I I, I mean, I don't get weird around celebrities. I, I, there's no one I need to meet. Like if I met Lady Gaga, I'd probably die, but I don't need to meet her. I felt like I needed to meet Conchita. It's like she really did change my life completely. It was, it was a moment that I was... Um, so excited for that SBS kind of sprung on me and it was a bit too TV orchestrated for my liking but you know I did get to have that moment uh with her and that was amazing and and um once you know all of that whole TV hype calmed down but I don't know really what was going through my head there was a lot going on I think um no one I know has ever said they've got to meet their actual idol and be like hey this is it's such an honor to meet you. So for that, I'm extremely grateful. And uh, we know Eurovision is a big part of your life. We know you've talked about it for, like forever, even from when you spoke to Delta, when you're on The Voice. Yeah. Um, I suspect there's some unfinished business with you. And I'm going to ask yeah. a question that you're going to probably get asked a lot from now on. <laughs> Would you ever consider Australia Decides or Eurovision again in the future? 
I don't think I'd do Australia Decides again. I would definitely consider Eurovision again, though. Yeah, okay. Um, I don't know. I can't say too much. I'm planning some things at the moment. I I, I definitely need to do Eurovision again. I, I have to. There's, there's a lot. I think this year, so extremely proud of myself. And I'm so... I'm so, I mean, I did more therapy during Eurovision than what people do in 30 years. I'm so grateful for the whole experience. I've learned so much about myself, but I think there was something about Eurovision that I had been working towards for so many years that the final result was a little corrupted by how much I was working on it five, six years ago, if that makes any sense. And I think now um, that I'm, you know, now that the mask is gone, now that I'm working on my own music, finally, I think, you know, doing so many TV shows, I've never really taken any chances for myself to really go. This is about Eurovision was the first time I'd ever done something that was really about my own music. And um, I think there's a lot I can I can do with what I'm doing now and uh, I'm excited to see what's, what's possible. Oh, very interesting. Now, you've had a huge year. You want to show the sides. You went to Eurovision. Then you ended up on the Mars Singer Australia. Um, we'd like to know what, what was that experience like? It doesn't look like you've had a break, children. <laughs> no, no, it was it was interesting. I mean, Eurovision was a lot. I went into Eurovision being like, all right, you guys, the SBS were very keen on not the same. I wanted to sing another song, but I mean, yeah. not the same as what we ended up with. I was like, all right, I'll go in with the narrative that you know it's more so about not being like the rest, and that's about it. And then it ended up being a very open and honest conversation about mental health and um, and about, you know, different disorders and, and things that I've grown up with, religion and my life and sexuality. And it opened up a lot of things for me. I was, you know, Eurovision aside is already exhausting in itself. I was mentally exhausted and I needed to take a good chunky break. But I also know that I do well when I'm working well. So when uh, I ended up staying in Italy for a little bit, just stopped posting on socials and then I got a call about the mass thing and I'm like this will be great because I I really do need this time for myself but I also don't want people to think that I'm crumbling and I can't pick myself up because you know I didn't do the best I could have at Eurovision because that wasn't the case at all I just needed something that would occupy me but also um, keep me keep me creative so I was like let's just do that and Marsing was crazy. That was a, that was a very full on experience. I don't know if you've heard anyone else that's done it, but that's the craziest, weirdest show I've <laughs> I've ever been a part of. Um, that's some really weird stuff that goes on there. But it was it was really great. It was good to not be throwing my name out in the spotlight so strongly like I have been for the last few years, and it was. Um, but to still keep doing what I'm doing, do you know what I mean? Yeah. But uh, it was it was good. It was really good. Yeah, because you were dressed up as a snapdragon out of all things, <laughs> and uh, must have been a good feeling to to take that off as well. <laughs> it was so uncomfortable. It was, and oh, I don't wow. I don't wear color, and I don't wear spandex and, <laughs> and um, <laughs> tight fitting pants and all this stuff. But it was it was fun. It uh, it um. It's surprising how much you, because you can't talk to anyone on that show at all. Yep. Nobody. All right. So, you know, you go from Eurovision where I literally couldn't shut my mouth, just talking a thousand words a minute to um, not allowed to speak to anyone ever at all. So it was, um, it was a good moment to be with myself. Now, you also recently gave us a huge performance at the NRL Grand Final. You got your foot on the uh, in the stadium there. And uh, how did it feel performing to a full packed-out stadium? Uh, that, that performance was amazing. Oh, thank you. I mean, anything that could have went wrong, went wrong. Oh, right. I was really? so proud to be on that, honestly. I was like, so they, they, they had this idea of me being in this box. It was all Madonna inspired and it lifts up. Camera didn't catch any of that. So I was sitting in a box, out in a metal box out in the middle of the field for 30 minutes. And I'm just like, what's going on? And the thing, but do you know what? It was, it was so, it was so not on brand for me to do something like that. And I loved that. I, and um, I remember telling my dad a very long time ago, uh, he was trying to teach me all things footy. I'm like, I'm never going to need to know any of this. I'm never going to be on a footy field. I'm never going to. Yeah, I was very wrong, <clears throat> and um, <laughs> my lack of sport knowledge really showed during the rehearsal week for that. But um, 
that was that was really fun. I mean, eighty five thousand people. It was great. It was a good time. Now, uh, you also released a, a new single. You released the song that you performed on um, The Mars Singer. Um, yeah, you're yeah. also off to Adelaide for Fe- oh, yeah. East Festival. You, I think you're doing the opening night um, there. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I'll, be, so- I'll be there to watch you, actually. I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> um, yeah, but then you're <laughs> off to the Netherlands for that big Eurovision concert. I'm not going to pronounce it because I'm going to butcher it. But yeah, um, <laughs> how did that come about, Sheldon? Some broad fest that'll feed. Yeah, ah, it's, um, well done. It's, uh, <laughs> It's going to be amazing. Uh, that I'm more excited about that than probably anything from this year. I mean, as I've said a billion times, I'm the biggest Euro fan. So I feel like, you know, I'm going into this and looking at the lineup when they invited me, I was like, oh, my gosh, this is like my favorite people of all time. It's going to be so exciting. Um, Adelaide's going to be great too. It's, it's, it's good. I'm, I'm busy. I'm really I'm, – I'm so grateful to, to Eurovision. I um, – I've I've never been so blessed with so much work and so much travel international and and um you know through Australia it's been it's been really incredible but um Amsterdam I'm I'm very I'm very excited about I I messaged uh my friend Lance uh, Victor Moore who's Lady Gaga's mask maker so he's making me something for for the festival which is going to be really nice. great I was watching more and more videos of it and it is huge oh, Amsterdam. Wow. <laughs> yep, yep. Uh, but I'm I mean I'm not doing masks anymore but I feel like this song until the end of time I'm gonna have to you know figure it out it's written into the song for it to come off so <laughs> yeah just trying to make that work uh, yeah you, you have been really busy and you are busy but is there anything else we can expect from you anything you can reveal <laughs> to us or just stuff happening in the background there's lots happening next year's yep. going to be massive i've i've we've worked very hard to make it happen but um got some cool surprises coming up for now i'm just working on i mean i released never enough from the mass singer just to make sure spotify is still booming but um i'm working on my first album which is really great very good very well on its way which is great i'm planning to tour that actually i'm not going to say anymore but yeah that's that's that's, which is really exciting but um (laughs) It's it's all happening. So just working on the album, music videos, and collabs with people, working with some, actually working with some Euro people overseas that I'm sure you guys will all know very well. So that's going to be very exciting too. Well, thank you so much for speaking to us, Sheldon. You spoke to us uh, many times, and it has mm-hmm. been an absolute honor to follow your journey. We're going to keep tracking your journey in your career, but you're an amazing talent, young talent, and the world is your oyster. And I just, I hope to see that Eurovision trophy in your hands one day. And just one thank day. you, thank you so so much for speaking to us. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thanks for everything.